I just realized that there are two different number ones, so if we have a question about that, we'll talk about that. Um, but what numbers do we want to see? Do you go over and have questions about? The ones I see the most are two, three, and four, so we'll do those. So two can be done in Desmos. Three we'll talk about. Uh, four we could check in Desmos. But with number two, These points fall on a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have slopes of zero. Um, I'll do number three for both number ones, uh, depending on what graph you got. So the linear transformation of graph number one. So if this is your graph, it doesn't go through the origin. This has a slope of negative two thirds, which means it was reflected. The slope was reflected. It was also, um, it's less steep. By two over three. And it was shifted up one. So the slope was reflected and is less steep by two thirds. The y-intercept was shifted up one. You would need all three of those things for number three, for this number one. For the other one, I think it's similar. The slope is the same, but the y-intercept didn't change. For number three. So depending on which one you have, make sure you have all three of those. The slope should the slope should be the same for both the reflected and less steep. But so the y intercept is different. And then number four, combine the terms. So you have. 13 minus 1, so 12x, and negative 12 minus 2, so negative 12x minus 14. If you put in the original and put in the new with like a capital X or a different variable you, and change, out of the slider, change that you would see is the same. Questions on those three? Um, write down these answers for the SOL A3. After this week, go back and double check this. Write down the answers today, but after this week, go back and see, could I do this on my own? And see if you get the same answers. So number one, 12 x to the third, you can use the parentheses, you don't have to, times the square Square root of three, yes. Number two, four, x to the fifth, y to the eighth times the square root of y. Sorry, not these. What we did last class, uh, the SOL A to A. Try and go back and do that. That's what I meant. This, you won't be Number three is this 15. Number four, two times the cube root of two, not two to the third power times the square root of two, but two times the cube root of two. Five was six x to the fourth times the square root of three x. Um, you can circle time while we're right here. Five 
is 6x oh. to the 4th times, oh, I just said that one, sorry. Uh, 10. And the first and the last, circle those two. And we'll go back up. Six, negative two times the cube root of four. Seven, five x to the six, y to the seven times the square root of two y. Eight, negative four times the cube root of two. And 9, 4x to the 4th, y to the 8th times the square root of 3. And when we go back to any of those. On to the next page. 11, the square root of 5, or 1 times the square root of 5, either or. 12 is 12 times the cube root of 9. 13 is 3 minus 3 times the cube root of 5. 14, 7 minus 2 times the cube root, the square root of 2, sorry. 15 is 10x times the square root of 5 plus 2, or you can write that the opposite way. And then I'll start at 20 working with that way. 20 is 90 times the cube root of 2. 19 is 60. 18 is 14 times the cube root of 12. 17, 8 times the square root of 15. 16 is 9a squared times the square root of 3 plus 13a times the square root of 3. Next, Monday, the these ones are due. <coughs> a for A and A for B. Those we have done, so you should be able to do all of those, but don't check yourself in Desmos. So A for A and A for B. Um, I will show you really quickly what that looks like on Desmos, what some of those ones we just did. So the slider rule you use a lot on Desmos, if I were to put in the original answer, change this to some positive number, and put in my answer if they match. You know, you got that right. So it's more of a check method. But it is multiple choice. whatever it is and it gives you a number, that is your answer. But if it gives you a decimal, you have to put in your answer to see if it matches. You could also change this to be specific values. Right. Look at your course calendar. Take note that uh, there are four of those masks for this unit. I have to put them up on the board. Two that will be due this Friday. Two that will be due next Friday. Um, I'm not sure if that was on here, I guess. And then we're going to be quizzing on the uh, 8th, which is next Friday, and testing the following Tuesday. This will be the last test for the quarter. 
and the last test until SLS. Which means after this, um, we're going to be doing different things for formatives, like your SOL packets or your shark bites. Those will count as formatives instead of informatives. And then testing after the SOL, we'll have those. Which also means this flex day will be our last real flex day until after the SOL. So if you miss that flex day or don't get your retake stuff done that day for the quarter, you'll need to come see me after school to finish anything else because we will not have time to talk. You may not have time to talk. Questions on any of that? Everyone should have notes that look like this. Some of this may be review for you, but I want you to go ahead and write this definition. A polynomial is an expression consisting of many terms. This is the overall umbrella term, polynomial. And when we deal with polynomials, they have to be written in standard form. So if they, they have to be written in ABC order with the highest exponents first. We're going to talk about how to do that. You will need to know how to do this, how to put them in standard form, as well as the know the number of terms, what those are called, as well as the different degrees. The highest exponent is called the degree. So you'll see a table underneath that that shows number of terms and degrees. Uh, we're going to add one, I think. are classified by degree and number of terms. So the degree is the exponent. So if there isn't one, if it was just 7, that would be a constant, if you want to break that as an example. Linear would be something without an exponent, but there's an x, so like negative 4x plus 7, that could be linear. Quadratic is anything with an exponent of 2. Cubic is anything with an exponent of 3. Quartic is anything with an exponent of 4. Add one more. 5 is quartic. You may see some of those as well. And then number of terms, if you see one, so if I just had 7 up here, or just negative 4x, or just 5x squared, or just 2x squared, or just one term, that would be a monomial, mono, one, so one singular term. Binomial, there are two, so if I have negative 4x plus 7, or any combination of those two, Trinomial, there's three. Polynomial is the over, uh, is the umbrella term for all of these, but it also means if there's four or more. So this is a polynomial. If I said we had three terms, that's a trinomial polynomial. It's really both. 
All right, so let's classify some of these. Number one, let's do degree first. Would this be constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quadratic? Constant. And then number of terms. One. What about number two? This one would be linear because I have the x. And number of terms? Two. This is just one term. So mom and one. Three linear because of the x number of terms binomial because of right number four quadratic and number of terms. Delta math is due on Friday. Make sure you keep the degree and the number of terms separate. Don't confuse those two. <clears throat> Questions on that part before we talk about standard form? So if we were to write this in standard form, ABC order first and highest exponent. So in this, everything is an X, so what would go first? We need the highest exponent first. Two x squared, and then it goes in decreasing order. So then plus three x plus one. Basically, what we see when we do anything with polynomials. <clears throat> what about eight? Seven x to the third, and then. squared and then minus x plus 64. Let's skip 9 and do 10. Negative x to the third and then plus x. Don't put in the x squared. We don't have that so don't add it in. Plus 24. Okay. 11 has multiple. So we're going to start with a. A to C order, highest exponent, so which one would go first? A to the third. Then if we have any A squares, we're going to do that. Do we have any of those? Five A squared. Yes. Five A squared, B squared. If we had any just A's by itself, we would be doing that. And then 2 AB. Minus 2 B. So notice that we have a high exponent with B, but we're going ABC order first, and then highest exponent. Questions about that? So then how would we do 12? Negative X to the third. Minus 7X squared, Y squared. Plus five y to the third, yep, and then plus three. Questions on that? So
that is part of what we needed to do. We're going to briefly talk about the next part and then kind of finish that tomorrow, kind of finish it the next day. We have a survey or something we have to do tomorrow, so do that. On the back of this is practice, but also you have your Delta Math. Skip to the next page that looks like this. Alright, so you may remember this, you may not, but here are some rules we need to remember. Negative bases raised to an even power will always be positive, but we must use parentheses. Negative bases raised to an odd power will always be negative. I'm going to give you an example of both of those. So let's say I have negative 2. But I'm raising it to an even power, let's say 2. If I use parentheses, we know this would be negative 2 times negative 2 to give us positive 4. But if I don't use parentheses, this is the same thing as saying negative 1 times 2 squared, which gives us a negative 4. Something we talked about at the beginning of the year, which is why we always need to use parentheses. But if we have a negative base raised to an odd power, so I'm going to use the same one. Put that in your calculator. <coughs> what would that be? or don't. Try it without parentheses this time. You get the same thing. So with odd powers, it doesn't matter if you use the parentheses or not, but with even powers, you must use parentheses. Keeping that rule in mind for everything we're about to do in this next event. So we talked about negative bases, so now we're going to talk about negative exponents. <clears throat> if I had some power raised to whatever exponent, that would be the same as me multiplying 0 times 0, which would give me 0. Right. Same thing for 1. 1 times 1 would give me 1. 2 times 2 would give me 1. And 3 times 3 would give me 1. But when we have negative exponents, I'm going to read this first, and then we'll do this. <clears throat> Some math magic happens. Okay, anyway. Um, we're going to take the base. So our base would be 1, 2, 3, 0, those numbers. We're going to flip it. And then when we flip it, that negative exponent goes with it, but it will now be positive. So we can do one of two things. We can expand it like this, or we can just do it as is. So if I, let's say I expanded it first. Um, let's not, actually, let's just flip it, sorry. So if we take this, it's over 1, and we flip that. And we now make that exponent positive. Well, we know 0 to the second power is 0. But 1 over 0 is it's not 1, it's not 0. Anything over 0 is undefined. So let's take that same logic for this one. If I take this and I flip it, and I make that exponent positive, we know that this is already 1, and 1 over 1 is just 1. So these are special cases because nothing else will be like those two. But now if we do this, take this, flip it, make the exponent positive, 
we know p squared is 4, really our answers have been flipped. 2 squared is the reciprocal of 2 to the negative 2. So then what would 3 to the negative 2 be? So anytime we have that negative exponent, you're going to take the base, you're going to flip it, you're going to make the exponent positive. Whether you want to change that answer right away or wait and figure it out, that's up to you. Questions about the number piece before we do some variables? These, if I were to expand them, we would just really get the same thing because a squared is a times a, which is the same thing as a squared. So we're not going to do that for all of these. All of your numbers that you know and all of the variables that you know. So all of them. a through z, negative infinity to infinity. All of those numbers and letters have an invisible one as an exponent. All of these numbers up here, you just don't see it. Is there, you just don't see it. So anytime you have something by itself, know that it has an exponent of 1. Now dealing with our negative exponent, same rule, take the base, flip it, make the exponent positive, what would this be? We don't know what a is, we're not trying to figure that out, we're just trying to figure out what that new version would look like. 1 over a squared. What about x to the negative 3? 1 over x cubed. D to the negative 1. 1 over d. Or you can write 1 over d to the first, either or. And then y to the negative 5. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about zero exponents, and then you'll have some time to practice, and then we'll move on. Um, the delta math on this stuff is also tied to the next packet of stuff, so you can try it. You'll be able to do like the first one or two sections of it, but not everything.